people both stranded and listed as missing and sadly no stop to the water. NBC's Miguel Almaguer is in Boulder tonight to start us off from there. Miguel, good evening. Brian, good evening. This is the Boulder Creek, but tonight it is a raging river. It is torrents like this one that have claimed at least four lives. Some 80 people are unaccounted for. And while the rain here has stopped for now, the threat, the danger, has not. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again from the hospital. There's been another disaster. Way too many disasters. It's sad, but it's true. And I wish the hospital was built because it would have been a tremendous asset in Colorado. Surrounded by surging rapids, several communities along Colorado's Front Range are islands. Locals pleading for help any way they can. An hour ago, that road was there. A heroin rescue at Big Thompson Canyon. Emergency teams used a zip line to bring this woman to safety. The hospital is overflowing in Colorado. They've evacuated three towns. They're using air buses. And they need a place to land. The square footage of this hospital is adequate for more than one helicopter to land at a time that would assist and make this evacuation and rescue process move a lot faster and a lot smoother and give these individuals the relief that they need. I wish I had the funds to get this hospital built. It would have been a godsend in an event like this. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no hospitals in the town of Jamestown. 295 have been evacuated, 218 missing, 19 dead. Injury, injuries at this point would be bruises, cuts, lacerations, exposure, dehydration, and broken bones from flowing and falling debris. People caught in the current will be thrown against debris in the water. They will be exhausted trying to get to shore. The hospital has three emergency bays with enough room to treat that many people at one time even with the workload from the local population. The National Guard deployed to evacuate the town of Lyons. 1,600 people trapped by rising water. Are you happy to be on dry land, safe? Yeah. Nine-year-old Alexandria, her three siblings, and mom Jessica will sleep in a warm bed and have a hot meal for the first time in two days. Just scary because I never thought that, you know, you just never think that something like that, you'd be in that kind of situation, all of a sudden you're trapped, 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 all of a sudden you're trapped. All of a sudden you're trapped. The key word is trapped. All of a sudden you're trapped without any warning. I know the problem they face in Colorado. I've been there before. Many people need help, limited resources, massive evacuation, air rescues. You can only transport so many people at a time. Endless hours in the air, the need for fuel. There are no hospitals in Jamestown. The closest hospital is in Boulder. It's a 200 bed facility. People need food and water. Each one found at this point can be hungry and thirsty. Night is setting in, it is cold in the mountains. Exposure is a problem also. It has been seven hours since the flood started. Border Hospital is overflowing at this time. So are the other hospitals in the area. Many homes were lost, many people with no place to go. Many people yet to be found. Refueling will be, will be slow and will slow down the search and rescue. Mud slides will also prevent and hinder land rescue. The rain has stopped for now. They'll wait more rain and the temperature is dropping. This hospital design will be an asset in these kinds of disasters. It will prepare for future events like these. The need for this type of hospital is evident. It will be built on 17,290 square feet with the heliport and the landing strip. In this rescue, the rescue team is trying to find a place to transport the victims. That is time consuming. This facility will eliminate that problem in the future. You look at Boulder, Colorado, and believe it is impossible to coordinate a rescue. I have seen the seemingly impossible done with my own eyes. I have been a part of the impossible. Hospitals like this make the impossible a lot more manageable. It's the back end of the rescue effort where the hospital comes in. To be able to treat over 2,000 people is possible here. First, there is a room for the air buses to land. It is a one-stop drop. They can even refuel here. 
With damage as far as the eye can see, many remain trapped, some unaccounted for. Holly Stetson's worried. She hasn't heard from her father. We're very anxious to get any word and see if he's if he's okay. This is the reason why the National Guard can't reach so many residents. Roads have literally been washed away. This afternoon, helicopters became air buses. The governor says the flood stretches 130 miles. Even just a foot and a half of water can knock people over. If at all possible, stay off the roads. In a university town, not everyone listens. With nearly a year's worth of rain in a single day, cities like Longmont face a historic and catastrophic flood. At least a dozen dams are overflowing, some creeks and rivers running 50 times above normal. Evacuees got out any way they could. I had three boat rides, one surfboard, motorboat, and a canoe. We found Lindsay Reeder and her two girls watching a river okay. that cut off their road out of town. We've lived in this neighborhood for almost nine years, and I've, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, it was absolutely terrifying. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a 3D model of a hospital I hope to have the funds to build in 2017. This is a well thought out hospital. It started out as a fallout shelter in case of a nuclear attack. And I reduced the size of the shelter and actually modified it to meet the needs of the local residents of cities throughout the United States in the event of small disasters, terrorist attacks, and major large-scale accidents that we're subjected to in the United States of America and the world that we live in. Thank you very much for watching.